McDavid married? Dry sidle extension coming? Question mark. Let's get to it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Better Than Never. <laughs> Yes. I'm not actually inside a women's prison at the moment. The horniest just went up to like 11. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's turn it down and get to business. Let's get to business. Got lots to talk about. Not really. We don't, do we? I don't know why I lied to you just now. Shout out to the audio department.ca. They help me. They make things sound better. They'll help you sound better. Book some studio time, record a podcast, record an album, record your spoken word poetry. Where do we begin when there's nothing happening? Shenanigans, that's where. The Olympics today, like how do you not get excited about the women's team? They were handed a six point deduction for by the way what i can only imagine is one of the stupidest cheating scandals it's not even sneaky drone spying (laughs) i was reading rick westhead's reporting on it and it sounds like this story isn't even close to over according to the latest that i saw this morning (laughs) The top 10 teams have been accused of cheating in some way or another. (laughs) We were talking about this at the office. If you're going to spy on somebody with a drone, what do you really learn if you're watching practice? I mean, I think about hockey, right? Tyler and Liam were covering the Stanley Cup finals. They were in the building during both the Oilers and Panthers practice. What did they learn? Nothing. Now, if they were more talented... (laughs) Had a spot in the coaching staff. Maybe that would have been changed, but I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. And then so to see them win their games, they had to sweep. They had to run the table in the prelims to get a chance to go to the quarterfinals. And they did that today. Pretty amazing. Like, that's why I love the Olympics. Because of how nuts some of these, you know, the storylines are, the results. So Canada beat France first time since 2016, beat Colombia today 1-0 to advance to the quarters. It is the most unlikely story based on where they were at. The distractions around the team, the coach getting suspended, getting, uh, the, you know, all the noise around drones spying. It's ridiculous. Or like my friend Matt Henderson said, maybe we're just discounting and disregarding how much fun drones can be. Maybe she just wanted a drone and she was flying it in the wrong place at the wrong time. (laughs) No, she was cheating. She was definitely cheating. I don't know how it works. Don't listen to me. I only read the headlines. (laughs) But congrats to the women's, uh, to the Canadian women's team for advancing. The most unlikely scenario, ultimately they made it work and you got to admire the way that they persevered. You know, listen, if you get seen in a drone, the last thing I'm spying on is somebody else's practice. Listen, we've got some very handsome neighbors here in their bag of manor, and uh, old Satan is an equal opportunity perf. You give me a drone, I'm floating in all the windows. You got a man taking a shower and a big old hog, I want to see it. If you're a mama with some big hanging titties, I want to see it. That is not appropriate, Satan. <laughs> fuck what do you want me to talk about during this time there's nothing going on <laughs> there's nothing happening uh I'm going to Sylvan lake this weekend it's a long weekend in alberta i don't know what specifically what is this long weekend anyway the august long weekend is it like labor days in september what is this one heritage day or something I don't know. Got a long weekend. I'm going to Sylvan Lake, bringing my dog. Frank has never been, and I know he's not allowed on the beach, so I'm not going to take him there, but he's never really been in the water before. So this weekend, we're changing that. This weekend, I'm taking him to Sylvan Lake. We are going to find an area where the dog is allowed to go explore. He's going to go have a little uh, little swim ski. 
or at least he's going to go explore in the water. He always wants to at my sister's lake, but that water's disgusting, so I don't actually let him go in it. The algae. The algae. Thick and bountiful. So he doesn't go in there. I let him in that water one time. He stunk for like two days until I got a bath when we got home from there. Never again. So this time, Sylvan Lake, I'm bringing all his bath stuff just in case he stinks, which he probably will. He's a dog. But I'm excited about it. The thing that bums me out is <laughs> they got rid of the water slides. When was that? Six, seven years ago? I used to go all the time for the water slides in Sylvan Lake. Now they're gone. I probably haven't been there since, to be honest. So I'm looking forward to it. A little weekend getaway at what I think is a very cool little town in Alberta. I used to go there for hockey school every summer for probably a decade when I was younger, when I was a kid. And I loved it. And just as I got older, I just haven't really gone back. This time, taking my dog, going to go hang out, going to go cruise. Looking at the weather in Edmonton is supposed to be hot. So that's exciting. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to a little getaway. Kind of led me into my oodle noodle big question of the week. We'll get to that later. What's the ultimate thing to do on a day off? That's what I want to know. You have 24 hours and zero responsibilities. Well, I guess your current living situation. I suppose if you have kids, you have responsibilities, but you have 24 hours off. What are you doing? What is the ultimate day? That's the big question. I've got some voicemails to talk about. Got some betting to talk about. But for the most part, I think this, I think for the first time in a while, we're going to be able to keep this podcast tight. The last couple have gone well over an hour, but I think today we can do it. Unless I start yammering on, who knows what the voicemails bring. The voicemail can last an hour just on their own. And looking at the list today, well, I got a lot of them. So what have you been doing since there's nothing going on? I've been watching the Olympics. I love the Olympics as much as the opening ceremony was super weird. And it really was. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I love the spectacle of the Olympics. I think that some of the sports are just ridiculous. I don't understand how they work. Some of them are pretty cut and dry. I love it. Currently, as I'm recording today, July 31st, seven medals for Canada, two gold, two silver and three bronze. So seven medals currently. Love to see that. Another problem I have with the Olympics, and we were talking about this at the office the other day. What? When are they on? I have no concept of when they're actually live. There's always the live bug in the corner of the screen, you know, like NBC or CBC or whoever puts that up. Time in Paris. It's currently one in the morning in Paris right now. I'm guessing there's no events happening, but there will be on TV. And it's confusing to me because sometimes I'll be watching something and I'll go, oh, that's cool. And then I'll continue watching the same broadcast thinking I'm watching live and they'll just go to what happened, the result. I find like the packaging on TV of the Olympics is garbage. That's why the packaging of shows like Love Island, which damn it, I'm back in. I didn't think I'd be back in. I knew you'd be back in. You can't avoid 20-somethings who are just horrible people. You love the way they treat each other like shit, don't you? I really do. They're so mean. <laughs> the infatuation turns into love, turns into lust, turns into getting them the fuck out the door in a matter of a week. It's the greatest. It really is. And this year, there's been a whole gaggle of shitheads. It's a good show. Me and Mrs couple episodes a night. What I don't like about Love Island is there's 9,000 episodes. That's my show that I'm currently watching in between Big Brother days. So today's Wednesday, Big Brother day. We're going to watch Big Brother today. But last night, a couple episodes of Love Island, you watch it, you take it. I'm watching that before I get to the new season of Too Odd to Handle because I cannot focus on two dating shows at once. The streams cross. They cross-pollinate. The shitheads all blend together. Blonde girl A looks like blonde girl B looks like douchebag A looks like douchebag B. I can't keep them straight. Does that make sense? No. Is that my cross to bear? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because sometimes not everything I do makes sense. Sometimes my brain is broken. <laughs> uh, Waz sent me a DM today on Instagram and I loved it. He recommended 
that we try. Oh, by the way, Dangerous Wade, speaking of Waz, I'll get to this in a second. Dangerous Wade, I got your DM today. We'll figure this out. So back to Waz. He recommended that we try viral food trends as Nation HQ content. I am all for it. So today, Dua Lipa, the singer, put out a video. I guess it might not have been today. That's just, it came to me today. The algorithm sent it to me today. Dua Lipa eats vanilla ice cream with olive oil and sea salt on it. So Waz sent it to me. He goes, we need to try these things out for at Nation HQ, and I am all for it. So... Look out for some more weird Waz content. Just like the Nation Gear ad, we've got a summer sale going on right now. And the Nation Gear ad with Waz getting splashed by water is so funny. I didn't know that's what they were doing yesterday in the park. I just saw the end result and it made me laugh. I'm glad I didn't know. Do you ever have that? Where you're like, I should probably know what that is. But the surprise makes it all better. That was the Waz Nation gear ad. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Waz is a treasure. We will also be trying out some weird foods. Danger Suede, back to you. I got your DM about sending Waz to TNT. You want to support it. You want to send Waz to TNT. We can make that happen. I don't know. Am I going to see you anytime soon? You can e-transfer me, I guess. We can workshop this in the DMs. I did. I, I forgot to reply to you. That is my bad. That is my bad. But I love the idea of sending Waz to TNT. I would wager, Waz, you're listening to this, you can text me, that you've probably never even been to a TNT supermarket before. Have you been inside? I bet you've driven past them. I bet you've walked past the one at West Ed. But have you been inside? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll find out. What kind of snacks could Waz get for the office from TNT? The snacks he bought last week... There's still some lingering snacks. In a surprise to no one, the can of coconut milk, not coconut water, coconut milk is still untouched, as is the singular bowl, a bowl of pho. I should have brought that home for the weekend. We've got one sleeve of saltines left. The uh, freeze-dried mangoes, they remain because they're basically poison. We've got the aloe vera drink still in the fridge. Hubba Bubba got crushed. Staff loves the Hubba Bubba. The Island Bar, the coconut bar, crushed. The Big Turk also gone. The wafer gourmet crackers slash cookies, those are gone. The biscotti's gone. The lemon crackers, or uh, not crackers, the lemon cookies, those remain. I've been eating them, but kind of out of protest. The, I love lemon flavored things. But like, if you give me a lemon uh, tart or something like that, I'm all for it. But sometimes the fake lemon in some of those things is too much, and I can't handle it. And that's what those cookies are. It's too much. It's too much. Just like this intro is too much. Why have I spent the last 13 minutes talking about nothing? Because there's nothing going on. But I guess it's time to get to the news. <laughs> The news is brought to you by Star Mechanical. Of course, Star Mechanical is one of Edmonton's biggest locally owned and operating plumbing and heating businesses. They've been working within the community for over 20 years, and many of the homes built in Edmonton over the last two decades have had their plumbing and heating systems installed by Star Mechanical. They offer 24-7 emergency services. Get all the information you need. Starmechanical.ca. You can schedule an appointment. Help them help you keep your home running smoothly. Where do I start when there's nothing happening? I'm going to run through a list of topics. We'll get there. The Connor McDavid wedding took place last weekend. We have still seen very little, very little information from that wedding. Now, I'm guessing that they sold the rights to the wedding to, you know, like fucking Vogue magazine or something like that. I don't know who I said Vogue just because that's the only magazine I know that would do that kind of shit. But I'm guessing that's what they did because phones were either put away or there was very strict instructions not to post on social. I'm guessing the latter. We did see a couple of photos come out. Kennedy, our royal wedding historian. She's got a thread about it on her Twitter account. But, you know, all public accounts putting out a couple of things. Like, as an example, Derek Ryan's wife put together a selfie of them or put it, posted a selfie of them. But it doesn't show the wedding at all. Nothing. The only thing I've seen from the wedding is the guy with the saxophone playing and Leon Dreisaitl having a little boogie in the background. When are we going to see some photos? 
I want to know which Oilers were there. Were they all there? I saw Warren Fogle was golfing with, I think it was Dylan Hall, or it might have been Evan Bouchard and Philip Broberg the day before the wedding. So I want to know how many of the boys were there. What kind of dance did they have? What was the first dance? Was it Tipsy by Jaquan? Probably. You're an idiot. <laughs> Give me some photos. Not that I even care. I'm just curious. The bigger problem, and let's be honest, is what happened in Game 7, which is already over a month ago. I would have loved that to be a Connor's wedding. You know? That's what they serve the cake out of or something? Fuck, it would have been great. Such a waste. Such a waste. Either way. I'm sure in good time we will see something. The other big news that everybody's waiting on is the Leon Dreisaitl extension. It's either close or it's not. It depends who you ask. It depends whether they even start talking. And again, it depends who you ask. One of Dreisaitl's representatives, if you remember, about a month ago, three weeks ago, said, listen, our target is mid to late August. We're not even in August yet. It is tomorrow is August. So we're still in line. But then there's quotes being taken out of context, displayed incorrectly on social media. I understand that's what social is, but Bob Stoffer was speculating on his show that it could be a seven or eight year deal. He was speculating. You know, I wrote about it yesterday at OilersNation.com using Bob's quotes, but I made sure, at least in my opinion, and he might have a different thought about it. I wanted to make sure I wrote in there a couple of times. He was speculating. He was opining. And now, Stafford's not one to make things up. So if he's saying it's probably a seven or eight year deal, that's probably what it's looking like. But by no means was he saying anything was confirmed. I just so took it more so as like, Leon Dreisaitl's camp is interested in a max term deal. That's great. That's great. But some people were taking it as gospel. This is done. We're days away. I, you know, I, I was guilty of that as well. I felt like we were going to be days away. But he went on his show to clarify his comments. And the, the clip kind of meanders a little bit. So bear with me. But this is from Bob Stoffer himself and Weathers Now over on 630 Chat. BP customer, a little heads up for those of you looking for low finance. Uh, finance. I like that whoever clipped this, by the way, got him in the middle of an ad read. <laughs> like, tighten up your clips, a little cropping, you know, but whatever. It's rates, camp wanting the max term length, and it makes sense for me, and my guess is they'll probably get the deal done. Oh, Tell no. Out the, I did not say that the Edmonton owners, it, Brent Ridge Ford is your Ford truck authority on the auto mile. What is going on with this clip? It's like he was in the read and then he got distracted or the podcast got fucked up. But I don't know what's happening here. In Wetaskiwin, cars cost less in Wetaskiwin. We're going to talk a bit. By the way, I've been radioed on my own show. There's a gentleman oh, no. out there. I did not say. I like how he said a radioed on his own show. <laughs> I think you mean ratioed. Say that the Edmonton Oilers would sign Leon Dreisaitl I, to an eight-year deal. I said I could envision the Dreisaitl camp wanting the max term length, and it makes sense for me, and my guess is they'll probably get the deal done. Doesn't mean that it's getting done in the next couple of days, but I am, again, at no point did I say it's my belief that there's probably a path to a seven or eight-year deal makes way more sense than a five-year deal. Time will tell. Andy Scott, Mike Leut of Octagon, Stan Bowman, so there he goes. He was he was he was speculating. It's fucking late July, man. That's what we do. Granted, I still think Leon drives out against an extension. I still think it's close. I still think this is going to be happening sooner than later. I don't see it dragging on. But again, I don't know anything about anything. So do I get excited too much by quotes I see from well, like you know, cherry pick quotes from Stoffer on Twitter? Yeah, I do. Because the man knows. Bob knows. What else do you know, Bob? You tell me. Bob can tell you what to get at Royal Pizza, I'll tell you that. I know they're not a sponsor of this show, but Royal Pizza is just down the street from your place, Bag Milk, and I think it's time you go get some za. You haven't had Royal Pizza in forever. It is time for you to go get Royal Pizza. Brought to you by Bob Stoffer. I would love the pizza. So anyway, we're waiting on Leon. I imagine it's going to happen sooner than later i don't think that they're going to be you know dragging this out 
I don't think any of that is going to happen. I don't think that the Oilers want this to drag out. Stan Bowman has already talked about how important Leon Dreisaitl is to the franchise, and he wants to get this done. I think it's going to be a full-court press to get Leon's contract done. Let's just go. But Bob, if you're listening to this, and I know you are, I get excited sometimes, man. We, as a collective we, Oilers fans, we get excited. It's a new day for the franchise if one of the best players in the NHL not only chooses to sign here as a free agent, or he could be a free agent, but to want a max length contract to stick in Edmonton. The times they are changing, friends, no longer is Edmonton viewed as a layover in the grand scheme of a player's career. How often was it when we saw a guy come to town, either it was too late or he was here for a good time, not a long time, went on to make bank somewhere else. If Leon Dreisaitl does indeed sign a extension of any kind, kind of bucks the trend. So I think for Oilers fans, a lot of us are still getting used to the idea that players are going to want to stay here because that hasn't always been the case. The players who generally wanted to stay here, and no offense to him, was Sean Horikov. You know, again, Horkov was a great, great oiler. He was a captain. He was a hard worker. He busted his ass. But he wasn't a Hart Trophy winner. He wasn't a 50-goal scorer. That's a huge difference to me. The times, they are changing, friends. But don't blame me if I get excited. Damn it. If I can't get a bit excited about the Oilers in late July, what are we even doing here? You do get excited about the Oilers in late July. Although I got to tell you, I went down to Seattle this week and I watched the Mariners and I went to Trader Joe's and that's pretty exciting too, my friend. You can't get all you want at Trader Joe's, but you can get pretty much anything else. I got some spices, I got some cheese, and I watched the Mariners win a baseball game. It was a pretty nice Wednesday for quads. The Holinka Gretzky tournament kicks off on Monday. That is August 5th. We're going to have some coverage by Liam at OilersNation.com. We are also going to have a Stephen Ellis from Daily Faceoff. He's our prospect analyst in town from Daily Faceoff. He's going to be covering the tournament as well. It's kind of one of those up-and-comer junior tournaments that don't really get a whole lot of love because of when it is, but it's here in the city, and I haven't decided yet if I want to go. Tickets are cheap. I'm looking at them right now. And get uh depending on where you want to sit i guess you can get some cheap tickets but do you want to go i don't know it's up to you for me i tend to get bored of hockey and i need a refresh i love the sport i love watching it i love covering it but my mind also needs a break whereas that's why i love steven ellis he watches so much hockey it is wild wild to think about all he does is crank out hockey takes. And I respect it. It's like when I saw Ludacris last weekend. I didn't even talk about that. Luda! Went to K-Days. By the way, I know the boys were making fun of me on Real Life for getting the VIP tickets to Ludacris, but, like, you have to. I haven't been to a concert at K-Days in forever. I haven't been to K-Days in forever. And after seeing the humanity, the massive humanity that was at the South Stage for Ludacris on Sunday night, I'm glad I spent the extra money because I had my own bar, I had my own bathrooms, and I could move. I was right there, you know? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Luda. It was also fun. I was talking about this on Real Life, just kind of like looking around. There's a bunch of people my age. You could tell this was the concert for millennials. Like... A lot of younger kids probably think of Ludacris as an actor, not as a rapper. But to me, he was a rapper with some huge jams, you know? So to see him was fun. To be as close as I was was fun. And to hear a bunch of people roughly my age, give or take, around me just going, Luda! <laughs> was also fun. What was not fun is the prices at K-Days. It's just like, what's the deal? Isn't this like for kids? Essentially, I know adults are there, not big kids too. But like... A large lemonade was $12. When did that happen? That was not always the case. Fucking inflation, man. It's crazy. Nuts. Did I get one anyway? Yeah, I did. Did my credit card be like, what are you doing? Yes, that also happened. Did I get a corn dog? Yeah. Did I spend way too much money on a fucking mediocre corn dog? Also, yes. 
But man, K Days was packed. It has nothing to do with the news, though. I was talking about the Lincoln Gretzky tournament. <laughs> if you're in for some high end junior hockey, why not go to the Halinka Gretzky tournament? Kicks off on Monday here in the Fair City. But it's a long weekend. I respect if you're doing something. I respect if you're going out of town. Another place I looked, admittedly, um, for the long weekend. Now, I booked this a while ago to Slave Lake, or not Slave Lake, Sylvan Lake. But I was also, you know, weird transition. I was also looking at Jasper because Jasper is one of my favorite places on earth. Obviously, what's going on in Jasper right now is devastating. Um, that's just a chance for me to plug the, to Jasper with love tea that is currently available up at nationgear.ca. All proceeds from that t-shirt are going to go to, you know, support what's going on in Jasper right now. We, we checked in with some of our partners. Who do we work with? What's the best way to do this? Where do we send the money? And they all kind of came back and said the Jasper community team society, that's where you should send it. They created a Jasper Fire Relief Caring Community Fund that will help Jasper community members in need. So we are working with the Jasper Community Team Society. And by the sounds of it, and thanks to your support, it sounds like we're going to be making a pretty significant donation. So I'm pretty happy with that. But again, nation citizens are the best. Always, always, always step up to the plate when we ask or when we need something. And this time was no, no, no different. So give your, give yourself a round of applause. Just the support for Jasper has been awesome. Everybody who's been there knows how great it is. And it's been awesome to see the support in just such an awful circumstance. Yeah. Uh, back to the news. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl appeared on ESPN's top 25 players of the 20, uh, 21st century list. Connor McDavid was third. Leon Dreisaitl was 13th. And uh, Duncan Keith was also on the list as well. And they included him in an Oilers jersey, which I find to be hilarious. When you think of Duncan Keith's career, the cups, the, you know, the awards, the production, the compete. Generally, you think of him as an Edmonton Oilers, so I understand that. It's for some housekeeping duties over on the website, OilersNation.com. Bruce Kerlock will be kicking off his prospect countdown. Today, he did a deep dive on Matthew Savoy and what the Oilers kind of have in him. If you are at all interested in kind of learning about the pipeline, Bruce is our man. Bruce is the guy with the insight he will also be out at the Penticton Young Stars Tournament doing a little bit of stuff for us out there. So look out for that if you're looking for some prospect content. The Oilers doing what they can to rebuild their system in a very real way. And Bruce is the man on the scene to cover it all. He's got great shit. I told this to Bruce on a call last week. I feel incredibly dumb reading anything he writes because it's vastly superior to anything that I've done. So today he's got meet the Edmonton Oilers new guy, Matt Savoy. So that'll be a good one. He is without question their best prospect in their system right now. And to have him on our side, very nice. Very, very, very nice. We also had a bunch of content go up this week, kind of recapping some of the biggest trades that or signings that Stan Bowman has had in his career. Sean Pangs is working on six significant trades made by Stan Bowman. We're learning. We're learning. You know what I mean? Everything about the offseason is about education and learning. And finding our way. There's no news to talk about. Nothing substantial anyway. We can't see pictures of the McDavid wedding yet. I got to buy Vogue magazine. Or as Tyler said, Mad Magazine. Everything will be a fold-in from McDavid's wedding. I'd actually appreciate that. I used to have a subscription to Mad Magazine back in the 90s. Might have been the early aughts. I don't remember. Whenever it was big. I used to like the fold-ins on the back page. Didn't understand a lot of the jokes, so it's making me think it was the late 90s. Because I would have been probably, maybe your mid-90s, I would have been probably like 10, 10, 12. Uh, anyway, speaking of Oilers appearing on lists, Matt Larkin over at Daily Faceoff did his top 300 fantasy players list. And it is a behemoth. That thing is like 9 million words, dives through everything that's going on around the NHL, ranks everybody. He had seven Oilers up in the top 100 fantasy players list. Very exciting to see. Really? 
kind of where we're wrapping up the news. There's not a whole lot going on other than me just telling you what's going on. The answer is nothing. The answer is nothing. The last thing I could tell you about in the news, the very, very last thing I can think about to tell you in the news is some brand new Jersey numbers announced for our new friends. Let me find that again. Why did I not have that here? Why do I not have that? Oh, here we go. Bag milk, you rascal. Jeff Skinner. Surprised to know one. He will be wearing number 53. Victor Arvidsson will be wearing 33. Colin D'Elia will be wearing number 60. They kept the numbers they used for their previous teams. Connor Carrick has worn 58 in Washington and in Boston. He will be wearing number 58. Matt Savoy had number 93 throughout his junior career, but he's opted to switch to number 22. Obviously, Nuge wears number 93. Josh Brown will be wearing number 44. Shout out to Zach Cassian. Number three that he current that he used to wear with the Coyotes is currently being worn by Cody Cece. So he also wore number 44 with the Bruins in 2021-22. Roby Yorventi. He is going with number 61, despite wearing number 52 with the Senators, and it's currently available. So number 61, shout out to Rick Nash. And there's you go. Some uh, some new numbers for the new friends coming to town. So if you want a Jeff Skinner number, now you know 53. Victor Arvidsson, 33. Those are the numbers they wore. It's nice to know some new friends get some new jersey numbers, you know? It's always fun. It's always fun. That's where we're going to wrap up the news. The news is brought to you by Star Mechanical. Visit them at starmechanical.ca to schedule an appointment and let them help you keep your home running smoothly. Starmechanical.ca. 24-7 emergency services and their team of tradespeople are highly skilled and accommodating for all of their customers. You're listening to BBC Radio Bagged Milk. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. For our friends at Oodle Noodle, it's time for... I was going to use... I want to use this one, but I actually push this one. I hate that button. I don't even know why this is on my roadcaster. I wish I could sub it out for something else. I wanted to talk about... The Big Question! I ruined my own sound effect joke by pushing this horrible, horrible button. I don't remember what I was going to use this for. Wasn't I going to use that for something? Or was it this one? Either way, both of these are bad. This one is called Big Robot. This one is called Large Robot. And this one is called Small Robot. I lied. Small Robot. I don't remember what I was going to use those for. Either way, they're on my roadcaster and I don't like it. I don't like it. You know? They can go little sensor button there. I never use it because they're allowed to say anytime you want. You can go and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, bag milk, why you it? You know what that's I didn't say actually words there. I was just pushing this button. See? Censored. For Oodle Noodle, the big question. It's brought to you by the Vegetarian Manchurian. It's available for a limited time offer. Just like the offer to make it a meal anytime. $6.99 in store. It includes an order of two spring rolls or a green onion cake along with a pop. Go to Oodle Noodle and get yourself something delicious. And the topic of today's big question, as I mentioned earlier, what is the ultimate way to spend a day off? What is the ultimate way to spend a day off? Starting at the top of the list, the fine folks at Oodle Noodle, they just sent me a, a gif of a walk. So a walk mixing things up. Well, even on their day off, they're working. Never avoid the grind, those folks. Kyle the Embalmer just says, doing absolutely nothing. If I was to pick, that would probably be my ultimate day off. Doing nothing. So when I think of doing nothing, it's wake up at, I don't know, 9-ish. I don't have kids. Mine, like Frank will wake me up. Anything past 9, Frank is not... He's not having it. He goes, you got to one, get me outside two, fucking feed me guy. So nine is the absolute latest I can sleep in. So I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to make coffee. I'm going to, depending on what day it is, 
I'm going to probably put on Sports Center. If it's on the weekend, I'm going to put on some kind of sports. Maybe it's a Sunday. I put on my new favorite NFL team, which is, by the way, it's getting stressful. Picking an NFL team. I didn't think it would, but there's so many people that come at me for different reasons. And I'm lost on all of it. I was hoping that watching receiver would help me pick a team. And it has a little bit. Like Armin Ross St. Brown from the Detroit Lions. Fantastic. I love, I like the cut of his gym. Devontae Adams. He makes me want to like the Raiders because of how much he seems to hate the Raiders. <laughs> for some reason, that speaks to me. Also, I don't want to be on a bandwagon. So, like, I like George Kittle. And I like Debo. But I don't know that I could cheer for the 49ers. They're too good. They're too good right now. But I really like George Kittle. I like his wife, too. I find them to be very, very entertaining. Their joie de vivre is intoxicating. But anyway. So I'm going to wake up. Whenever that is, I'm going to have coffee. I'm going to watch maybe some sports, maybe some sports center. If it's nice out, I might go sit outside, just watch the world go by. Leave my phone inside, do nothing. Could have a nap, maybe read a couple pages of a book that I've been, that I started months ago. <laughs> maybe I'll have a cocktail at a, at a hour that is way too early by social standards. Gary says day off. What does that mean? In the summer, that usually means hiding from the heat. And in the winter, I'm on the hills skiing or sledding with my daughter. See, that's a great day off. Barry says, hear me out. I'm at Oodle Noodle right now, and it is my day off. So the shout out to Barry. The advertising works. Poppy Chomes. I actually really like this one. Teaching my son how to smoke ribs is exactly what's happening on today's day off. And he sent me a picture of his smoker. There's some ribs there. They look delicious. I'd like an update on the ribs. I'm a big ribs guy. Big, big ribs guy. Ian says, a day at the lake, having a time with the kiddos, enjoying every minute I have with them before they are too old and don't want to do anything with their old man anymore. That is, that is like, I don't have kids. I just said it probably four times on this podcast already, but that is always one of the things that I hear about from people that have kids is just enjoying them while they're small and they actually want to hang out with you. I was never really one, like, I grew up with my dad and, uh, my siblings are quite a bit older, so they had already moved out by the time I was old enough to really do anything. But I always liked hanging out with my old man. I found him to be endlessly entertaining. He's always been funny to me. So I never really had that thing where I didn't want to hang out with him. Never really had it. Hmm. I'm trying to think. No, I just, I don't think I ever had it, but I love the answer, though. I love the answer. Stephen Fiddler says, if it's the summer... I want to be floating down a river with friends. I do love a good river float. Stacy says, chillaxing in the backyard at the lake, just soaking it all in. Not in the cards this year, though. What do you got going on, Stacy? You got something going on in your life? Tyson says, e-scooters in the river valley. Limes are only 12 bucks for an hour or $34 for three hours. Pretty decent way to spend an afternoon. So they give you a $2 discount if you book for three hours. Seems unfair. Christopher Palmer says off day in the summer is at the lake on the boat wintertime day off would have to be skiing I wish I was closer to a lake with a boat I'd love to go fishing on a day where I had nothing to do just even if I don't even catch anything or if it's just catch and release either way sitting on a boat with some tunes going floating around bobbing that's good living I'd be lying to you if I said I hadn't fallen asleep in that exact scenario many, many times in my life. Something relaxing about it. Just getting rocked, rocked in a boat like a baby. Big, big fan. Uh, Dayton, friend of the show, says, I love me a day at the beach or playing a show with his band. Sounds lovely. Nick, friend of the show, boating in the summer, skiing in the winter. Dr. Do a Little. Shane said, uh, he just sent me a picture. I don't know where he's at right now, but he's on a beach and he's at a lake and it looks like he's just watching the world go by. I like to know, I, I'm noting that a lot of you for your days off, it's just about a solely about recharging, which I respect. Jim, to wrap things up for the big question at Oodle Noodle, morning round of golf, afternoon patio beers and an evening cookout. That sounds like a lovely day, to be honest. A little round of golf. 
couple of patio beers with the boys. Barbecue something up to wrap it up. Maybe you go to Oodle Noodle. Make it a meal for $6.99 in store. Huh? I like the big question. I like getting to know you guys a little bit. A lot of good day off activities. And a lot of them are just doing nothing. I think there's something underappreciated about doing nothing. Just literally doing nothing. Could be our little secret. You may be listening to Better Late Than Never. I agree. It's going to be our secret. See what I did there? I looped in the bumper into what I just said because I found one from Donkey Volley, our gentleman caller. Uh, for Bet365, the Bets of the Week is brought to you by Pet Brett365, proud partner of Better Late Than Never. Open an account with Bet365 today and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it is never ordinary at Bet365. Use the promo code OILY bonus. Where am I looking? Futures, once again. Futures is what we like to do at this point of the podcast. And I think it's fun because it's interesting to see the line move as the summer goes along. But this time I want to go a little bit different. So this time I picked player regular season goals as the future I wanted to look at. Because there's three Oilers currently listed on the player regular season goals page over at Bet365. And two of them, actually all three of them are interesting. All three of them have the capacity and have hit 50 goals in a single season. So we're going to start off Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, both the line is set at 50.5. Both of them also have minus 110s on the over or the under. So essentially, it's almost a pick em. Not quite, but almost. Do you think Connor McDavid, after scoring only, what was that, 38 last year, can get back to winning, or back to, I guess, eclipsing the 50 goal mark i guess 51 goals he's only ever done it once in his career that was the season where he had 64 that was in 2022 23 so he's only hit 50 goals once in his career he's had 41 goals twice he's had 44 goals once and then he's been in the early to mid 30s four times so including last year which was a 32 goal season i personally think that Connor mcdavid is going to be a lock to hit 50 goals this year I would bet the over on that. The next one, though, I find much more interesting because, again, Connor McDavid has only done it once. Leon Dreisaitl, though, having the exact same odds, I feel like is pretty reasonable value to me. He has three 50-goal seasons under his belt. In 2018-2019, he hit 50 for the first time. In 2021-22, he hit 55. And in 2022-23, he hit 52. Last season, he had 41 goals, which is considered, quote-unquote, a down year for scoring for Leon Dreisaitl, which is hilarious to think about. That one, I am betting the over on all day leon dry to get 50 plus goals or i guess 51 plus goals on the season at minus 110 that seems like good value to me yes he only had 41 last year but i also think that there was a big chunk of that season specifically in the early part where he was way slower than he ever is if you're looking for value leon dry over 50 is a place where you might find it at minus 110 odds the third oiler and this one I also find interesting is Zachary Martin Hyman. Of course, he had 54 goals last season in 80 games. The line is set at 43 and a half. Again, over is minus 110, under is minus 110. 43 and a half. He's only done that once in his career. I don't personally expect Zach Hyman to score 54 goals this season. Just like when Nuge hit 100 points the year before. I don't expect it because it is such an outlier that it doesn't necessarily make sense. Now, every year in the three years that Zach Hyman's been in Edmonton, his goal count has increased. He went from 27 to 36 to 54. 44 goals seems reasonable for Zach Hyman. But he's only done it once. So where do you go? Life's too short to bet the under. But do you bet the over, even though the odds are only minus 110? I don't know if it's juicy enough. Not that I don't believe in ZMH. I do. 
but I don't know that I would put money on him hitting the over on this one. I don't know that I would. Open an account with Bet365 today and bet on a huge range of markets. So whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it is never ordinary at Bet365. You ever get so damn frustrated, you don't even know what to say? Well, of course you do, because you're a fan of the Edmonton Oilers. And you're listening to Better Late Than Never. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Trilogy Oilfield are an established provider of tools and expertise across multiple oilfield disciplines, specializing in rentals, pipe recovery, abandonments, and completions. Currently, they maintain full-time operating units in Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. What kind of tools do they have available? Well, rental tools, fishing tools, coil tools, drilling tools, mills and bits, completion tools, any tool for any job. Trilogy Oilfield Rentals. TrilogyRentals.ca. I actually didn't have a righteous sack beating planned for today until about... Oh, I don't know, two hours ago when my phone started ringing incessantly. Now, given what I do for a living and my position in the company where I work, it's not necessarily uncommon that my phone rings quite often. However, what is uncommon, although not as much these days, is that the numbers coming in are ones that I do not know. Generally speaking, I don't answer numbers I don't know. However, in my personal life right now, we are moving my mom from BC to Edmonton to be closer to family. So that's happening currently as we speak. This is a process we are currently doing. So my job amongst the siblings was working with movers, working on some of the logistics things, working on making sure that all of her shit gets from her place to the new place, right? I was setting up some, uh, you know, like tenant insurance. I was just handling some of the things for my mom. Part of it, specifically the movers, require me to be on the phone and in touch for dates and booking and blah, blah, blah. I am now, this week, until this move is complete, answering my phone to make sure that I'm available for those calls to come in. However, right before I started recording, probably two hours before I started recording, my phone would ring private number. I'm like, oh, normally I wouldn't answer this, but maybe it's the movers. Answer. How now? Oh, now I can use this button. So I'd answer the phone and be like, this is a call from the Canada Revenue Agency. You owe $9,000 and they must be paid via Apple gift cards. Failure to pay the fine and amount owing will result in your death. Somebody from the Canada Revenue Agency is at your door right now. We will kill you with a machete. We will kill you with a machete. Please submit your iTunes gift cards no later than right now or you will be killed with a machete. It's annoying. That happened three times back to back to back. And it almost felt like because I answered my phone the first time, they were like, oh, we may have a sucker on the line that's actually answering his phone. So then I get another one. I was like, what was that? You are required to submit a DNA sample to this address or you will be killed via a machete. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. But like, how annoying are these robocalls? What can the providers do or not do to stop these from coming in? Is there nothing I can do to block my phone number out from this. I feel like just not answering the phone is the most logical answer. But in a moment like this, when I'm working on logistics for my mother's move, not really an option. But every time I answer the fucking phone, hello, hello, hello. This is Canada Revenue Agency. You have an amount owing that is well past due. As a result, we are here to chop your legs off unless you give us $200 in Amazon gift cards. And I get it in the sense that these things obviously have to be working. That's why they do it. But surely there's got to be a way to figure this out, no? There's got to be a way to get these fuckers off my phone line. 
and not just mine. I know you probably have it too. I know they're probably calling you too and they're annoying and I hate it. How is it 2024? And this is the thing that's happening. It's like, remember back in the nineties, if you're old enough, you used to get those emails that the Prince of Azerbaijan or something like that was going to give you $2 million that is buried in his house. This reminds me of those chain emails, but now they're coming directly to my phone instead of me being able to block them and delete them out from my hotmail. Yes. I still have a hotmail address outside of my work one. Thank you. And for Trill Geo Field Rentals, that's right. Just sack beating. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. You're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bagged Milk. Meanwhile, you should like and subscribe. It's the right thing to do. The voicemail is brought to you by the Oilers Nation Open. Coming up at Millwoods Golf Club on August 30th. That is a Friday leading you into the long weekend. It is the seventh annual Oilers Nation Open. It is our golf tournament that we host every summer. It is one of my favorite days of the year, and we are going to be raising a bunch of money for Gregor's grads. As I'm recording this today on July 31st at 537 post midday. Is that what PM stands for? Never really thought about it before. Hang on. I got distracted. What does PM stand for? PM stands for post meridian or after midday, the time after noon. Hmm. The abbreviations AM and PM stand for the Latin ante meridian and post meridian, meaning before and after midday. These abbreviations should be used only with numerals. Example, 9 a.m. or 9 a.m. Not spelled out 9 N-I-N-E A-M. Only with the numbers. Ante Meridium or Post Meridium. There you go. Bruh. The voicemail brought to you by the Willis Nation Open. Submit your team or register as a solo artist at nationgear.ca. Help us raise money for Gregor's grads. This thing is going to sell out. We've only got a handful of teams left. If you want to golf with the boys from the Real Life Podcast, you can email Tyler at OilersNation.com. He's taking your bids. Submit them. Golf with the boys. You'll get a chance to win. And I'm pretty sure Jay said he was going to buy some drinks for you. I don't remember. If you want to go to the tournament, it's a great day. Let's get to the voicemails. Mate, I don't, I don't want to bang on about the, the whole Stan Bowman thing. Um, you know, it's already been talked about. Plus, this will come out like a week from now, whatever. But the one thing I want to say on the subject is um, the way that, like, obviously there are some outliers and some, you know, you see some weird shit out there. Um, but the way the Oilers community, like Oilers Nation, but also just the com- fan community in general have all come out, like, really fucking unhappy about this. Um, and like you say, one of the, like the most unifying things in recent, you know, whatever. Um, I'm just really proud of the community, you know, like obviously there's been a few like little dodgy, like is it where the place we are, the team of like redemption stories or second chance or whatever the fuck. But, and you know, some of them are a bit difficult to, at, at the time. And obviously this one really sucked, but the way everyone came together to like, you know, voice their opinion and, and, you know, their displeasure in this one. It just made me proud of this community and proud to be an Oilers fan, even if I'm not quite proud of the organization at the moment. So, um, yeah, huge shout out to Oilers fans. Obviously, you know, we'll get through it somehow, but yeah, it it fucking sucks. But yeah, love you all except Nick. (laughs) Nick takes some shrapnel at the end of the voicemail. Yeah, I think, Dukes, by the way, don't like just because the news is a little bit old now. If you got a take on it or an opinion, leave a voicemail. That's what it's for, ultimately, is I want to hear from you. And I think that the Stan Bowman thing is still annoying to me. And it's weird to say that I just, I'm so unhappy with the organization that I choose to cheer for. Right now, I mentioned it, I'm going through the process of like picking a new NFL team to cheer for. And like, do I have to consider some of this shit? Maybe I do. How they treat these situations, right? And I think the Oilers, 
really fumble fucked this one. Like I'm looking as of right now, Jeff Jackson still private. I'm still pending by the way, Jeff still waiting for that invite in buddy. Let me in the circle. You went private the day you hired Stan Bowman. I, 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 I click that follow button. I'm still pending. What do I have to do? Jeff Jackson. What do I have to do? Um, but yeah, I don't like the way the Oilers handled it. I don't like that Jeff Jackson went private and he goes, and then he follows that up by saying, oh, I don't really care about, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't really care about the fan reaction. This is what I think is best for the team. This is what I'm doing. And to a point, I think there's part of, you shouldn't always care about what the fans think. Not always, but sometimes you should. I think in my world. And, you know, some of the things that people have gotten mad at us for in the past or things that we wrote or didn't write or should have said and didn't say or did say and shouldn't have said or any combination of those. And people got annoyed with us or like, I don't like this. So I'm not doing this. You guys are idiots. Like, and we do it anyway, because sometimes we don't let the audience dictate what we're doing. I've had people shit on this podcast and I still do it. But that's different. I don't think failing upward is the move, how it should be. And again, like I said, I don't want to rehash the whole podcast I did last week, but I think I appreciate some of the work that Stan Bowman did. And I appreciate what he said. But talk is cheap, motherfucker. Let's see some action. What's done is done, unfortunately. I wouldn't have made this choice. I would have gone literally any other route. But I don't get a say. So I got to come here and talk to Dukes via the voicemail. And that's fine. That's fine. But Dukes, don't ever think like you can't disvoice your pleasure or you can't voice your displeasure with the organization just because the news is late. You want to say something, buddy? You say it. You always got a green light with me. Uh, this one just says bumper. So we'll, I'm assuming we got a new bumper. Have you ever listened to a podcast that was so shit it made your ears bleed? Well, I haven't, because I listen to Better Late Than Never <laughs> with Bag Milk. You know what? I always encourage you guys to send in bumpers. That is a hell of a bumper. Admittedly, I didn't know which way that was going. I assume it was going to be shitting on this podcast, this very podcast, uh, you know, which would make sense given its poor quality, generally speaking. And its host, not very good, you know? But onward and upward. We will put that to the bumper bar. We will put it to the bumper bar. Uh, next up, we've got an anonymous caller. Who be you? Oh, bloody hell. Um, yes, it's the donkey. Ah, um, donkey. God, the news from Jasper is ridiculous. Um, Heartbreaking. Yeah, it's people, livelihoods, and yeah. My God. And the oldest nation have always talked about um, talk, going over there and... Oh, man, that is hard um, for a person from England who has no idea, let's be honest. But yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Good Lord. Um, hope everyone's in a good place. Do what they have to do. Love you all. Good work. Yeah, I think uh, Donkey said it well. Even if you're not from here, you can see how much that place means to so many of us and the community response has been unbelievable to watch again if you're if you're interested in supporting with a t-shirt nationgear.ca we also just set up a direct donation link there too so if you just want to help and you don't want the shirt feel free to go there and help out as well thanks for that donkey good to hear your voice back sir <laughs> right <laughs> sorry I, I had a voice there Almost had a voice, etc. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, the old Bowman thing. I'm absolutely okay with it. Um, he's had retribution. Um, he's clearly um, had a go at things that, and he's been open, saying, "Look, I should do better." Which human being on this planet? Every you, every me. That's placebo. Every you and every me. Um, yeah. But every person on this planet have done things wrong. Great. All right. It's not. But, you know. Yeah. I think. Um, draw a line under it. Great. 
he's he's the one going forward. Um, and I'm talking rubbish. I thought I had a plan there, but never mind. No, but seriously, uh, Bowman, <laughs> go for it. Um, he's got <laughs> success. Oh, lordy, lordy. Imagine success for the others. Mm. Does anyone fancy a cuddle? Mm-hmm. See, there's like a perfect counter to Duke's point. It is It just like seems like Donkey's obviously not, you know, approving of what happened but willing to give a second chance. And I think that there's a growing segment of Oilers fans that are falling in that camp as well. And that's fine too. You know, that's fine too. I personally don't agree with that, but I also don't like, I'm not one of those people where it's like, Oh, donkey said a a countering point to my own thoughts. So I'm going to be mad about it. It's not how life works. It's not how life works. Next up. Anonymous caller. There's another donkey volley, probably. See, there was a reason I just absolutely uh, rejected any sort of um, nonsense um, on the uh, voicemails. <laughs> because you don't need to know my shite. He says, <laughs> screaming his own hustle. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello. Oh, God, I hope you're all gorgeous. Well, you're all... Everyone who listens to this podcast is gorgeous. Let's be honest. Because even though, yes, yes, you in the behind there, oh, you're still gorgeous. So there you go. Hello, sexy you. Yeah, everyone's great. I love you all. <laughs> God almighty, what am I talking about? Sometimes I think of Donkey Volley like, if I could get my dog's brain, you know what I mean? Like, Frank will be like, Ooh, a ball. I want to play with the ball. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. Bird. Squirrel. Let me get the bee. Let me get the bee. Squirrel. It's kind of donkey volley a little bit. I respect it. Don't ever change, sir. Don't ever change. Waz, what do you guys say? What's going on, Bad Milk? Waz here. Not sure if I'm able to make office requests here, but I don't know if it's appropriate, but my (laughs) girlfriend recently got a new job, (laughs) a new fancy job. And they've got massage chairs. So I'm wondering if we could acquire some massage chairs at Nation HQ. I think that'd be a wonderful idea. I've always wanted a jacuzzi. Don't think that's feasible. Just me. But um, yeah, you think you think we can swing some armchairs? Who, who do we? Who do I need to talk to about that? It'd be very nice. Thank you. Waz, well, I encourage you to pitch this to Jay. I say you write up a business proposal about why we deserve massage chairs at Nation HQ. You send it to Jay. The only stipulation I've got for you, pal, is that I want to be there to watch the pitch. I want to be there when you go up to Jay and you say, I have got an idea that is going to really push this company ahead. Just really, really push it to take the next step. And I think it's massage chairs. You've also, you haven't pitched, Jay, your idea of me and you going to India together. You text me randomly that you wanted to go to India with me, but I still have yet to see the pitch. I approved it. I said, you just need to get Jay on your side. I'm going to India with you, Waz, as long as Jay wants to pay for it. Where's that pitch, Waz? Where's that pitch? Do you want to get farm here? Or do you just want to (laughs) dells? Do you want to get funky? Hmm. Baby, this is your chance. Hmm. Good lord, that's ridiculous lyrics. Um, yeah, I should stop this right now. <laughs> I used to do this, by the way. Hmm? Andrew, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I never get tired of him. You're listening to this right now. You may, you may get tired of Donkeyville. I won't. Never. Just like I never get tired of Waz. Waz, back to you. Bag milk, Waz here. It's that, uh, it's that time of the year again where uh, dead birds are appearing everywhere on the street. Oh, Jesus. Every street has one or two. It's very sad. I assume they're falling due to the heat. Let's be honest, he's killing those birds. Everywhere he goes, there always ends up being dead birds. I can't stand him blaming the heat. Satan lives in fucking hell. I'm surrounded by fire and brimstone. I'm surrounded by the hottest of the hot temperatures. You know how many birds are down here? 
None. No dead birds. Satan takes care of the birds. Don't tell me Waz isn't killing those birds. And the smoke, it's probably not good for a bird. It's probably not good for anyone, but I can see, you know, especially if you're, if you're a bird, it's probably going to hit you a little harder, right? It's not me. It's not me. I can confer- confirm that. I would not harm an animal. Uh, I would never do that. I have too too good of a heart. That being said, it's a shame to see the dead birds all around. If you notice them, let me know. Why does it sound like he's lying to us? He says he loves animals, and yet he talks about dead birds so casually. Lil Quads is confused. Aren't we all, buddy? Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Uh, Wikipedia Chad, you were up. Wikipedia Chad. So there's a lot of football talk, and I don't know anything about football. Mm. Um, but I know that uh, my boy James Hetfield from Metallica yeah. is like a diehard Raiders fan. Yeah. So I was just curious, and I looked up um, famous Raiders fans. Here's the list. Go a ahead. A lot of metalheads here. Fucking right. Let's go. Uh, okay. 50 Cent. Mm. Anthony Kiedis. Chili Peppers. Yep. Axl Rose. Meh. Be Real. Billy Joe Armstrong. Green Day. Uh, Br- Bret Hart. Carlos Santana. Uh, Chuck Billy. Yuck. Dave Mustaine. Yuck. Megadeth. Sorry. Uh, Easy E. Van Halen. Fred Durst. Yuck. Gabriel Iglesias, George Lopez, Guy Fieri, Hunter S. Thompson, hell yeah, uh, Ice Cube, Ice T, Ivan Moody from Five Finger Death Punch, mm. uh, Hetfield, fuck yeah, Metallica, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Jeff Hanneman, yeah, Slayer, also Kerry King, Slayer, Joe Satriani, MC Hammer, Mick Thompson from Slipknot. Uh, Rob Flynn, cool. Shavo Dodgen from uh, System of a Down, that's sick. Steve Aoki, Tiger Woods, Tom Hanks. Pretty good list there. Pretty good music list. You know what? Mm. I, hadn't, I hadn't really considered who cele- what celebrity fans I might be able to see. Because here's the thing. I've decided almost in my head I'm going to hitch my wagon to a shit team. I think that way that's the most acceptable approach here. So to hear, like, Tom Hanks, who's in one of my favorite movies ever, Castaway, is a Raiders fan, and I'm considering the Raiders, despite the fact that they're garbage. I think, you know what, Chad? I think you're, you're, you're making some moves here. I see you got a part two here, wicked Chad. I've done a little more digging here. Please. Um, it seems like the Raiders was the only one that really had a Wikipedia page for, like, the fans. Hmm. Or a big section, anyways. Um, he would also mention Detroit here, so I found a little bit on that. Um, Eminem, of course, that's of course. the biggest one. Uh, Kid Rock, Aretha Franklin, Bob Seger, Tim Allen's kind of cool. Big Sean, Jeff Daniels, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Smokey Robinson, uh, Keegan Michael Key. Those seem to be the main ones here. Um. Another avenue that maybe you haven't thought about, uh, you're always talking about how Tyler won't kiss you. Mm. Well, maybe if you were a Bills fan, he'd be inclined to kiss you. Nope. Hmm? Maybe you would definitely, for certainly, for sure, be invited to the wedding. So I can't like the Bills. They're too good. And also, the Bills are too good, so I don't want to be a bandwagon guy. Two, Buffalo, sorry, Buffalo, not a destination city. The rest all check out. So they've got three of the five criterium, um, which are the merch is pretty good. The players are pretty good. Potential to be good is that they're already there. So they've got those three, but bandwagon, that's a big one for me. And the destination city, not at all a destination city. If he was like, you know what? I remember that big win that Tyler and I watched together and caressed afterwards. He has to be at my special day. Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. Think about it. And I'm not, yeah, I'm not in a football at all, but seeing the Raiders list, you know what, man? I think, I think at gunpoint, I might be a Raiders fan. That Raiders list? Just in solidarity with a bunch of the artists I like. I don't know, man. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. The Raiders list, I mean, Chad, despite the fact that you're not a football fan, you're making a difference here. 
The Raiders were already on top of, not on top of my list, but they're on the list. Again, cool, cool ass merch. Two, I loved NWA growing up. They obviously wore a lot of Raiders merch. Three, Destination City. Uh, Devontae Adams, one of the best receivers in the league that I've learned doing my research and potential to be good. I mean, they're bad. So, you know, maybe four out of five. Pretty good. Pretty good. Also direct flight here to Vegas. That's one thing where like Miami, Miami's on the list too, but there's no direct flights to Miami. Trust me. I've, I did two flights during the finals to Florida and it's, it's a jaunt to get there. Wikipedia Chad contributing. I like that. That was very, very good. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Um, so last week, or oh, it's probably still happening, I don't fucking know, but um, I don't know, the, the SpeakPipe website, whenever I try and, um, you know, you record something one take because you fucking, you're a champion. Of course. Um, but when you go to listen back to it at, at the end, it's completely silent, like there's no sound. So last week, you know, I obviously recorded two different versions of the same fucking thing, which I'm disgusted in because I, like, the, I'm just riffing. <laughs> um, so to do the same thing twice is a bit no good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. If any- are you in the tub? Where are you right now? Anyone else is the same when you try and listen back before you fucking submit? Can't hear it. But um, anyway, I know you're um, talking about, oh, which NFL team you're going to choose for the incoming season. But, mate, the fucking rugby league season, the NRL, is, like, in full swing. Like, the finals are only a few weeks away. So, like, I don't know why you're wasting your fucking time talking about the NFL that isn't happening for ages because, mate, the fucking boys are on right now. Like, she's getting down to the pointy end. So, I don't know. Get your fucking stick out. Have a, have a fucking crack at rugby league, mate. Well, teach. Get into it. Teach me something, Dukes. I'd be open to rugby league. I think rugby is a badass sport, to be honest. It's basically football with no pads, in a way. A lot of dudes. Massive, massive dudes. It's cauliflower ear. I respect it. I also learned about checking the oil in rugby. I don't know if that's a thing that actually happened or if that's just a rumor I read about, but it's a thing. You can look that up in your own time. Satan looking up here for you. It's essentially when somebody sticks a thumb in the other guy's ass as a means of gaining leverage. It is uh, probably frowned upon, if not welcomed by fellas like me. Uh, so... Teach me about rugby, Dukes. I'm, I'm, I'd love to watch some rugby. I don't know a thing about it. I don't know any of the rules. So that's where you're starting. That's the base knowledge you got to work with. The answer is zero knowledge. Waz, what do you got to say? Bag milk. How's it going? Waz here. <laughs> Just want to give a big shout out to uh, Rusty the Reckless Optimist. Who Always. I do believe listens to this podcast. I think he does. I've too. been uh, going to his Twitter page or his ex page very often recently just to uh, look at workouts. He posts his workouts on his Twitter page and they are a great resource because, you know, sometimes I don't want to do the same workout every week, every day. So I just go to his page, see what he's doing. And he's doing some pretty hefty lifting. Like it's heavy lifting. I like it. So uh, Rusty, shout out to you because you are my resource for new workouts and uh, you're getting swole because of it. And I'm trying to, you know, work out and get in shape a little bit more throughout the summer right so uh if anyone needs any workouts go to rusty the reckless optimists x page twitter page you you know what it is rusty the reckless optimist so let me have a little look here what rusty's up to i too am gotten a little doughy was mentioned that before oh yeah look at this so this was July 30th. This was yesterday. This picture of Rusty is getting swole, looking good. Uh, chest and shoulders. So seven-time incline bench press with the barbell, four-time seated lateral raise, three-time chest fly, three-time lateral raise, three-time cable fly crossovers, three-time lateral raise. He was in a little chest and shoulders yesterday. Good for you, Rusty. Rusty the Reckless Optimist. He's a good man. He's a good man. Uh, looking at his Oilers, we know. 
He's gonna he's gonna be a fan of Utah. He lives in Utah though. Uh, the Saints. He has recommended the Saints to me. He is a Jazz fan and he is an Archers fan. The PLL. What is that? PLL. What is that? Hang on. Now I gotta learn. Archers. PLL. What is that? Uh. Oh, it's lacrosse. Premier Lacrosse League. Lacrosse is a badass sport. It's fucking violent, man. The way they can swing those sticks at each other always amazes me. It always amazes me. Anonymous caller, who be you? Here's a question for you, Bag Milk, and I feel like this is important to bring up. Go ahead, Ari. And I don't feel like it's being talked about as much. Sure. In the in the wake of the Bowman hiring. Uh, and Jesse Blake brought this up on STPN on his last podcast. So in the recent history, the Oilers have a track record of bringing on guys with controversial or muddied past or a bit or bring in some sort of recent controversy. It's like it's not being a it's not a coincidence anymore, put it that way. So it started with uh Evander Kane, him getting ousted from the Sharks for his personal life and et cetera. Uh, then it was, and people forget about this one, the Jake Rutanen PTO. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can search it up. You'll find it. Uh, then it was Corey Perry and the Chicago Blackhawks, and now it's uh, Stan Bowman. So at what point do we start believing that the Oilers, well, at least from the top down, you know, they don't, they don't really have any moral integrity, and they don't really care about, you know, alienating a portion of their fan base or they don't really care about the fans feelings in decisions like this. Um, I'll, I'll, so, and it goes back even further than that, Ari, it's, uh, goes back to Mac T in the eighties, you know, Mac T, uh, yeah, I mean, you can read about it. Well documented what happened to him. He was in prison. If I don't, if I recall correctly, it's been a while since I thought about it, but, um, it started with Mac T. So it's not, it's been a thing that's been part of the Oilers fabric for a long, long time. Um, is it right? No, maybe, I don't know. Is it part of their fabric as an organization at this point? Yeah, it is. So it went well before the Evander Kane thing. Um, giving people second chances isn't always bad, right? Do I think they're morally bankrupt or whatever you said? I don't remember. Not necessarily, but, uh, do I agree that they don't give a shit about what the fans think sometimes? Yeah. Well, I was saying that earlier. I just, it's clear that they don't, right? Sometimes you don't always have to care what the fans think, but sometimes maybe pay attention. This time they didn't. But again, nobody asked my opinion, all right? I mean, you did, but nobody else does. Waz, thoughts? Hey, Bag Mick, question for you, man. Do you trust the hot dogs at 7-Eleven? So I'm curious because they look kind of decent, but you know, one time I had oh, chicken man. wings from 7-Eleven and they were awful. And my my buddy made a good point that those hot dogs are probably rolling there for like hours and just collecting bacteria. So I'm not sure if I trust the hot dogs at 7-Eleven. Like I I can understand getting one from Costco because they're boiled before you get them instead of just rolling there for <laughs> hours. So would you trust a hot dog from 7-Eleven or if, if if you had one, you know? Was I've eaten way weird, weirder things at 7-Eleven than the hot dogs. I've eaten the hot dogs countless times. Most of the time that happens at two in the morning after a couple of pops. Um, that's normally when I'm looking for food at 7-Eleven if it's not just like a road trip snack. But yeah, I've eaten the hot dogs. I've lived to tell the tale. Uh, the worst thing I ever got from 7-Eleven was a piece of pizza in Winnipeg when we went there for the Heritage Classic a handful of years ago. Sometimes Rick still brings it up on Oilers Nation Radio because it was so bad that I made him try it. I mean, everybody that was around tried it. Chris, the intern, tried it. Uh, I don't remember who the girls were with were with us at the time, but they, I made them try it. Anyway, yeah, eat the hot dogs. One time, the grossest thing I think I ever ate at 7-Eleven is I ate 7-Eleven sushi. That was the only thing that made my tummy feel a little upset. He got the poo-poos, was. He got the cacas. He was going to... So, Waz, go eat that hot dog. Is your friend right? Are they collecting bacteria? Probably. But that's why you got an immune system. You got to build it up. You got to make it strong. It's like, oh, you're talking about going to the gym in one of the last emails or voicemails? Same thing. Let's go to the gym. Make your immune system strong by eating the most disgusting foods you can find. Thank you. This is not medical advice. Don't take it as such. Anonymous caller, who be you? And just a little bit to add to that, 
the greater failing is on the league, in my opinion, because never mind the Oilers, because the Oilers, they were allowed to do all of that. It's on the league for not having a harder stance on it or not having a plan in place for when, when teams want to do shit like this, you know? I think that's a fair point. Talking about Stan Bowman being reinstated by the NHL on July 1st. Ari, I think it's a fair point. The Oilers couldn't have hired him if the league didn't reinstate him. Right. Uh, two more voicemails coming in. Both of them from Waz, actually. Waz is a busy boy. Let's see what else he's got. But, like, in the same breath, by the way, I should mention, like, I really wish we had street food vendors. I mentioned this last summer, like, a guy you could just walk up to, hey, man, can I have a hot dog for, like, $5 or whatever it is? Like, like I said, when we went to Nashville, they were littered everywhere. You could get a, get a hot dog, a burger, a taco on the street, side of the street. It was beautiful. It was immense. Great food. I, I saw them in Calgary when I went for the Stampede. They had them. Like, why don't we have these in Edmonton? Like, it'd be so great for the economy. Just my opinion. <laughs> We need street food vendors, not like, you know, street, what the fuck are they called? Street vans? Not uh, food trucks. There he goes. Jesus. But we need like street food vendors. You know what I'm talking about, right? So we have hot dogs. Good ones in Nashville on the street, by the way. We need more of those here. I agree. More street vendors. And also, but like was, if you're going to get a hot dog from a street vendor, that baby's fresh. They're making those things up like relatively in short order, at least mostly. There's more turnover, I think, than what you were talking about earlier with the 7-Eleven hot dogs, at least in my opinion. I've eaten so many vendor dogs. I remember I used to go to Union Hall when I was about 18, 19. Back in those days, Waz used to get 25 cent highballs. That's right, I said 25 cents. You'd walk in there with a fiver and you'd leave smashed. And I'd go outside and I'd spend another five on a hot dog outside and I'd go, how do you sleep at night? I got hammered for five bucks. Eat your hot dogs. Support our local vendors. That's how we're going to get more vendors here, Waz, is you got to support them more, right? Final voicemail of the week also comes in from Waz. What else is on your mind, pal? Bag milk. Honestly, you know, you want to know something beautiful? When you're filling up your gas on a beautiful day like today, no clouds in the sky, and you, you're just filling up your gas and you're enjoying <laughs> the beautiful weather. Just kind of take it in. You, you, you appreciate the moment. Beautiful. Like, how can you not love that? Um. <laughs> what is he talking about? Getting fucking gas? Certainly there's other times in your life when you can just appreciate the moment lost. Getting gas? I'm not old enough to drive a car. How am I supposed to appreciate the moment if I can't even get gas? Um. I think I need gas in my car currently. So, Waz, I promise you... If I do need gas and my whip, I will enjoy the moment. I recommended just enjoying the moment a little bit more often anyway. Get in touch, smell a flower, touch some grass, all that stuff. Get offline. Unless you're reading OilersNation.com. That's where we're going to wrap up the voicemail. Join us for the seventh annual Oilers Nation Open. August 30th at a Millwoods Golf Club. NationGear.ca, that's where you go to sign up for a team of four. You can enter as a single. You can get two dudes in there. Two singles will put you together. Don't worry about it. Just send us a note. We'll match you up. You're going to have a great day. I promise. I promise. NationGear.ca. I thought we were going to go under an hour today. And as I'm looking, we're over an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm very verbose. I can't shut up. You guys inspire me. Thank you for the voicemails. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for entertaining me. If you want to talk about Stan Bowman, you leave a voicemail. You want to talk about hot dogs at, you know, 7-Eleven, leave a voicemail. What is the greatest gas station or, you know, quick spot to grab snacks at? Maybe that'll be next year's, next week's big question for Oodle Noodle. Of course, go buy some Oodle Noodle if you want a snack. Torpedo shrimp, delicious. 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 That's where we're going to wrap up the podcast. Have a great long weekend, everybody. If there's something that pops up, I will be back. But if not, just wait longer. Oh, Captain Felton with your charms. In your uniform, you're looking so fine, so true. To the high seas and beyond. Beyond, oh, I'd follow the stars. Where you are Oh, I would sail the seven seas for love With you, my captain, undisguised above